Welcome to Worship This Day. I'm Pastor Michelle Miller, pastor of Wesley United Methodist in Crookston, Erskine and Foston United Methodist Churches. And I'm Rob Kopp, pastor of Bemidji United Methodist Church. We are a clergy couple coming to you this day from the chapel at the Bemidji United Methodist Church. Let us be in a spirit of worship. In the midst of the pandemic, we gather as people who God has delivered to this day. We gather in gratitude. We give thanks to God who is creator, redeemer, sustainer of all living things. We give thanks to God who provides. Let us worship in faith and gratitude. Let us pray. Sustaining God, we give thanks for the many ways you have sustained this planet of abundance, and we are grateful for our benefits and enjoyment. Guide us now in transforming our gratitude into participation in your reign of hope and possibility for all life. Show us our role and help us to humbly play our part. Amen. The Gospel according to Matthew, the sixth chapter. No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to the one and have contempt for the other. I'm going to start again. The Gospel of Matthew, the sixth chapter. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be loyal to one and have contempt for the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Therefore, I say to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Who among you by worrying can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the field grow. They don't wear themselves out with work, and they don't spin in cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon, in all of his splendor, wasn't dressed like one of these. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, what are we going to eat, or what are we going to drink, or what are we going to wear? Gentiles long for all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble on its own. This is the word of God for you, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I've always marveled at wild creatures, especially birds. Like, how do they manage to live and reproduce without shelter and without knowing for sure where their next meal is coming from? Even camping trips require preparation. Today is Christ the King, or Reign of Christ Sunday, and Thursday is Thanksgiving. We are also living in a time of great worry, a time when hospitals are filled to capacity with COVID patients a time when the virus is spreading rampantly throughout our community, 
a time of shortages, a time when more and more people just seem irritable. It's a year after the presidential election, yet politics continue to be polarized as if we are still in the midst of that election. We're tired. We're worn out with worry. We face the question, who are we loyal to? Who do we trust? And what do we have to be thankful for in a time such as this? Jesus' words are those of a provocative rabbi. If you serve wealth, you will have contempt for God. He doesn't pull any punches, does he? And his examples of those not serving wealth, lilies of the field and birds of the air, living things that pass through life one day at a time. Paradoxical, isn't it? If you lived from day to day without shelter, without knowing for sure how your basic needs would be fulfilled, well, doesn't it seem like you'd worry more? And yet, like many others, um, oh, <laughs> and yet, like I, like many others, have shared meals with people living in poverty. I've heard more gratitude expressed at free community table meals than many a Thanksgiving gathering. I've also heard people who have more wealth than you or I will ever have any possibility of, ha of having express greater worry about whether they will have enough money than people who are dirt poor. It's odd, isn't it? So many of us grow up believing the pretense that if we work hard and say we should have enough money to live well. And yet every one of us is just one terminal diagnosis, one bad accident, or one illness away from discovering false promises and false trust. Whatever we build or make of our lives, whatever group we align ourselves with, none of them will assure our future. While it's not as simple as, don't worry, be happy, there is a path and a pattern for living in these troubled times. We gather as people drawn together in faith by God. By faith we trust in God to be present with us in troubled times. By faith we give thanks to God even even when it's difficult. By faith we participate in the healing of the world, even during those times when it feels, well, it feels like life is getting worse. What we give thanks for is much more stripped down, much more basic than anything we can build. It's even more basic than understanding. Like the lilies of the field and the birds of the air, we give thanks for the gift of life itself. Each precious moment, even, well, dare I say it, even the miserable ones, a gift from God. Each breath, each meal, each restful moment of sleep, a gift. Yet there is so much worry which can separate us from knowing this as a gift. Thanksgiving isn't a day on the calendar. Thanksgiving is a way of life. The kingdom of God is not reserved for some future beyond our grasp. The kingdom of God is in the here and now in this Thanksgiving, every time we gather in gratitude, every time we participate in sharing abundant life. It's not reserved in heaven light years away for the day when we finish our time of suffering. Jesus says that God does not intend for us to worry. Suffering is inevitably a part of life, and we are conscious of so much suffering right now but suffering can be eased when we gather in the good medicine of giving thanks. 
really, this is the heart of why we worship, is it not? We gather bearing the burdens of a broken world. We gather in thanksgiving, for gratitude is our God-given healing balm to calm our worries and heal our suffering. We gather in loyalty to God as followers of Jesus. We gather in faith because we trust God. Amen. Let us join in singing, Bring Forth the Kingdom. You are the salt of the earth, O people, salt for the kingdom of God. Share the flavor of life, O people, life in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. You are a seed of the word, O people. Bring forth the kingdom of God. Seeds of mercy and seeds of justice grow in the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth city of God. We are a blessed and a pilgrim people bound for the kingdom of God. Love our journey and love our homeland. Love is the kingdom of God. Bring forth the kingdom of mercy. Bring forth the kingdom of peace. Bring forth the kingdom of justice. Bring forth the city of God. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Mighty and gentle God, you who have created us, given us life day by day, and hold hope for abundant life for all your creation, we find ourselves now in your presence. And in your presence, we can see our worries and anxieties, our fears and our suffering in the light of your promise, that you care about us unendingly, that you love us without limit, that you never give up on us. So in faith, we reach out for that hope. Like your winged creatures and your fields of wild flowers, we rest in you, opening to imagine what your love longs to bring about in these days. Shape our souls day by day, expanding our consciousness of your realm all around us and of the gift of life. Grow in us your perspective that our greatest riches are in the joy of life and the way of loving and giving that you show us. Continue to teach us through the life-giving words of Jesus, whose prayer we join. Our, our Father, Father, Mother, Mother who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. So friends, we do truly gather in a spirit of celebration this day. We are grateful for you, for your continued support of uh, our ministry here online, and also for your support for uh, each of our churches and uh, in-person worship that occurs there. So there are many ways to um, support our ministry here. Uh, by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. But among those are the uh, possibility of sponsoring a worship service online. The uh, suge- suggested uh, contribution for this is $35. And uh, if you'd like to um, have the sponsorship read, in memory of somebody, um, just pass that along with a check for $35 to Wesley UMC in Crookston. Um, the address is listed there. And also, uh, we encourage you to uh, support the uh, one of the four churches listed here, the one that is uh, closest to um, your being in relationship. And so uh, let us now come to God with our gifts and with our gratitude.
Let us pray. God of grace, we gather especially this day to give you thanks, and we are grateful for this time and place. In the midst of a pandemic, you provide us opportunity to participate in the healing of the world. May our gifts participate. May they be blessed. May they be multiplied in your name. Amen. May this be a hopeful thanksgiving. In giving thanks, may our faithful journey participate in God's stewarding of our world. In celebrating together, may we be healed. Amen.